Hello, in this part I will demonstrate how to set up an HVM, so a uh, hardware VM is a little bit different than uh, most of the other virtual machines because the other virtual machines are para-virtualized domains. Um, that means that um, some of the functionality is actually done by the host system because it's uh, way faster for the host system to execute it. Uh, with a hardware VM you basically you could say um, it uses its own hardware, there is no way that the host is actually executing stuff. So this allows us to install any type of operating system into those uh, virtual machines. Uh, for example, you can set up a Windows, you could set up a Linux, you can set up a FreeBSD, PFSense, whatever you want. So first off, we are going to create a new virtual machine. This time we are going to do it by the terminal from our DOM0. And as an example, I downloaded Kali with the XFCE uh, desktop environment and I'm going to set that up now. Let's call the virtual machine Kali. We specify the, that it's going to be a hardware VM and we are going to give it a label and let's pick the label color gray. And now the virtual machine has been created. Okay, so after that's done, we can uh, start the virtual machine um, by specifying a CD-ROM drive if that ISO is saved on the DOM but I created it on the uh, inside a app VM, so we need to specify that. QVM start Kali minus minus CD-ROM equals personnel double point and then the path to the ISO. like this and now it is starting up the virtual machine inside its own little window and we can uh, simply install it the way we are used to So the default username is root, the default password is Tor. And I think I clicked the wrong button. Hold on. I think I started it from the CD instead of installing it. So let's just uh, restart it run the start command again yeah and this time I'm going to select install you can see that we have uh, 20 gigabytes of storage which should be enough and I'm going to select uh, English as a language And as a key map, I'm going to pick German because I'm using a German keyboard. Now it's trying to um, attempt a network connection by using DHCP. If we go inside the VM settings, um, we can see what uh, 
IP address uh, it cubes wants us to give this virtual machine. So we can just uh, enter that manually. So as an IP address I'm going to pick 10.137.219 with a class C net mask and the gateway being 2.1. And the same is uh, with the name server. I'm just going to call it pen test. And I'm going to set a password. Now we are going to select a time zone. And of course, uh, we are going to partition the disk. So it's going to create a swap partition with half a gigabyte and 20 gigabytes for the root file system. And now I will speed up the installation process again. Now it's asking us if we want to uh, select a software, a, a network mirror, and we select yes. Uh, we don't need any proxy. And now it's configuring uh, by downloading the files and installing them. Now it's asking us if we want to install the grub bootloader into the master boot record. So we select yes. And we select the device. Okay, so the installation has completed. And we can simply restart uh, the virtual machine now. And we should be... Um, running a Kali Linux inside. What I also want to do is um, give it a bit more resources. I'm going to give it six cores and I'm giving it an initial memory of let's say uh, four gigabytes. Now let's finish by starting up the virtual machine. So the default username is root and the default password is root backwards, so tor. Oh no, it's it's the one I set during the installation. We use one empty panel and this is where we can do all the changes later on. Okay, all I want right now is uh, test my network. So as you can see, I have internet connectivity. I can also resolve DNS. So if I go to my personal VM and set that to use the sys firewall, because my Linux Kali is also using the sys firewall. So if we take a look at the network now, you can see that both the virtual machines are on the same subnet. 
but if I'm trying to ping one another, that is not going to work. Because we actually have to configure the firewall rules first. And that is what I'm going to do in the next part. I'm going to uh, configure the sys firewall to allow communication between my personal and my pen test VM. So, see you soon.